Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people, forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us on this time after Pentecost. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. Welcome, one and all, to outdoor worship here at our Saviors on this Labor Day weekend. In fact, turn to someone close to you and give them a high five and say good morning. Good morning. All right. Thanks for complying with that request somewhat half-heartedly, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We say welcome not only to you who are here, but also to you who are joining us by television this morning. It's wonderful to share in this day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you who are here to stand where you are for our call to worship. The response should be familiar, even though it's not printed in your bulletin. Your words are, we come to you, Jesus. Here's the call to worship. Come to me, Jesus invites. We, we come, come to you, Jesus. Jesus. Come to me if you are tired. We, we come, come to you, Jesus. Jesus. Come to me if you carry burdens. We come to you, Jesus. Come and discover rest for your souls. We come to you, Jesus. <laughs> Let's hear you now. The lyrics are printed. Here we go. And sing. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold revolution somehow now I'm lost in your freedom oh this world I'll overcome my God's not dead he 
He's surely alive and he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion, like God's not dead. He's surely alive and he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. One, two, three. And fire forth, come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire forth, come shake the ground with the sound of revival. So we trust in Jesus' invitation to come to him as we confess our sins. Merciful and loving God, thank you for your redeeming love for all. Even so, we confess that there have been times of doubt in our spirits. We confess that when difficult times are upon us, we don't always believe that you will carry our burdens. We feel we always have to be in control, trying to demand the desired outcome. Help us to place our trust in you. Forgive our lack of trust. Remind us that you surround us with your care. Open our hearts and spirits again to your healing powers. Amen. Hear the good news, dear friends. Jesus releases us from our burdens. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Put your trust in his love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Here we go. One, two, three. Here and now and new.
tell you what, from my perspective, all of you are sparkling like diamonds this morning. Let's pray, shall we? Oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience. And give us strength to follow your commands. For we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching and music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound uncurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and that you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is found in Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Expend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. Word of God, word of life. There's something special about a sixth grader being taller than me. This is great. <laughs> Friends, I don't need to tell you that we are living in a divided world. We experienced a painful reminder of this several weeks ago with a um, white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. And the violence that resulted in the death of Heather Hare when a man intentionally drove his car into a group of counter protesters. And this week, lest we feel too hopeful about the groundswell of support for the victims of Hurricane Harvey, which has been amazing to watch, hasn't it? Acts of generosity and true heroism. But lest we feel too hopeful about all of that, in the midst of this, this past week, 150 evangelical leaders published a statement listing 14 affirmations and denials about what they believe is faithful and not faithful regarding human sexuality. And whether or not you agree with them, I think it begs the question, why? And especially why now? I don't even want to talk about which side is right or wrong, but I want to lament that this issue is so divisive in the church, and not necessarily in our congregation, but in the church as a whole. And this divisiveness, I think it gives human sexuality a more prominent place in defining the identity of our communities of faith than it really deserves. 
The church in America, I think, is in the midst of an identity crisis. No matter your denomination, church attendance is at a low point in our nation's history. And that causes fear that the church is dying. Especially for those of you who knew a time when sanctuaries and education wings were bursting and full in the 1950s, which happened to be the time when church attendance was at its highest point in American history. I imagine it would be so hard to watch this decline from the highest point to the lowest point in your own lifetime. And if they think if I saw it, I'd be scared too. But as a millennial, frankly, this gradual decline is all I've ever seen. And I admit then it's easier for me to see the shift in this liminal moment that we occupy as an opportunity for hope rather than fear. And I think the church is dying. I think the church is dying to her accommodation of culture and power and empire and is primed to rise to something new. I quoted her last week, Rachel Held Evans, but I think her words bear repeating. Death is something empires fear. It is not something that resurrection people worry about. For we have a God who knows the way out of the grave. Amen? Amen. These words from Paul in our reading point to what a community shaped around Jesus will look like. And I want to read this text again, but with a few clarifications, thanks to some help from the experts. First, I learned that these commands, and there are 30 of them, they are all second person plural imperatives. Oh yeah, we're getting grammar nerdy this morning. This means that these commands are not for individuals, but they are for whole communities. You know the disclaimer, don't try this at home. Well, I think Paul would have said, don't try this alone. You can't do this by yourself. And I'm going to read the text again, this time with a few tweaks and from the New Living Translation, and I want you to listen with two things in mind. First, these commands are for our community to do together. And second, I want you to listen and imagine a world where this is the stuff that people would think of when they think of the church, our congregation and the whole Christian church. So here it is again. People of our Savior's Lutheran Church, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard at serving the Lord enthusiastically. Bless those who persecute the church. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think that you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. This is what Christ looks like. This is what a community shaped around Christ looks like. This is what a community of living sacrifices looks like. This is what the Holy Spirit is working in us and empowering us to be. Now compare this to what the world thinks about the church. Does the world look at the church and say, wow, what a group of genuine, loving, serving people? No. The world looks at us and sees something entirely different. And on Christian, David Kinnaman lays it out for us. People are staying away from the church or leaving it because they see us as hypocritical and exclusive, out of touch, only concerned with the church and its members, judgmental and too political. Obviously, I don't agree and I don't think this is true, but this is the perception that many people have of the church. And I think that there are some ways that we contribute to this kind of perception. But just imagine the impact our Savior's Lutheran Church could have on this community if we were known for our genuine love instead. Imagine the impact on our nation if the ELCA is known for enthusiastic service. Imagine the impact on our world if the whole Christian church was known for how well we love even our enemies. 
But church, if we are going to shift this perception, we're going to have to clean up our act. We've got to quit wasting our time and our resources and focus on the stuff that distracts us from following Jesus and contributes to these misperceptions of the church. We've got to quit cozying up to power. We've got to quit comparing and competing with other congregations, shifting the same people from one community of faith to another. There's no winning that game. We've got to quit pretending like there is one faithful political party or view while the other is godless. We've got to quit our obsession with other people's gender identity and sexual orientation and bedroom matters. We've got to quit our focusing on divisions from other denominations and other faiths when what we share is so much more significant. We've got to quit whatever business causes us to focus more on keeping this building and institution going, but hinders our ability to accomplish our mission outside of these four walls. And nobody got time for any of that. All of this junk, it weighs us down and prevents us from following Jesus while we hustle for our worthiness, as Brene Brown teaches. This junk, it's the power of sin. But Christ has come to set us free from all of it. And now, because of Christ's gift of grace and salvation, we have real work to do. God is calling us out into the world to be Christ's hand and feet here and now. Not that we have to fix the world, but God's call is to be faithful here where we are. With what we have, with what we have been entrusted, with the gifts and abilities and opportunities that we have been given. I read a story this week about, um, from 2014 about a small town in Germany that showed up in a big way and were faithful where they were and with what they had. Amy Allen tells the story this way. The town of Wunzeidel, perhaps unknowingly, put Paul's commands into action. Each year, outsiders descended on their town for an annual neo-Nazi march that recognized a Nazi leader who was once buried there. In response, a group of organizers gathered pledges, uh, pledges, March of Dimes style, for every meter the neo-Nazis marched. The money raised, however, went to benefit organizations that oppose extremism, and they raised over $12,000. I love this part. As the neo-Nazis marched, they encountered writing on the street thanking them for raising so much money to fight hate. People lined the streets, cheering them on, thanking them for raising so much money to counter their work of hate. The organizers even set up water tables along the route to thank the marchers. A lovely spin on Paul's command, if your enemies are thirsty, give them something to drink. And that was the end of the marches. We, will never, we never know when the Holy Spirit will nudge or point or orchestrate an opportunity for us to show up and embody God's love in a big, radical way. But in the meantime, we practice discernment through prayer and scripture reading, service. We worship together, confessing our sins and receiving God's forgiveness, coming to the table to receive God's grace, all preparing and enable us to live our faith and embody Christ's love in our everyday lives. Church, God sees our world. God sees our divisions and hate and pain among our human family. But God has not abandoned us here. Rather, God is calling the church, sending us into the world to love and serve in the name of Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray again that the Holy Spirit would help us to shape our community around Paul's commands and Christ's life. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we come to you again, and we pray that you would fall afresh on us here. We thank you for your work among us that empowers us to serve our community and make a difference in the world. We ask that you would continue to help us discern our mission, that you would help us to say no to the junk and say yes to your command to let love be genuine, to serve with enthusiasm, and to show love to all, even our enemies. And with that clarity of purpose that you would send us out again to bear witness to Jesus and his way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I feel all of you. I feel Kids, that's your sign. Come on down to the steps and join Pastor Randy. If there are any other kids that would like to come and join us for a kid talk, you're welcome to come on up to the steps. Ava, why don't you come back down here? I know it's kind of cool to sit up high, but join us down here. I don't know if you guys were listening this morning to the, the second reading that Grace read for us, but Pastor Sammy told us that in that reading, there are 30 different things that a guy named Paul said we should do as we're trying to follow Jesus. 30 of them. I don't know about you, but when I read my Bible, sometimes it's helpful to read it in a different style Bible than what I typically use. And that's kind of what Sammy did this morning in her sermon. But I brought along another version that I was going to read to you guys and listen for all of the different things that Paul says we should do or not do when we're following Jesus. Are you ready? There's 30 of them. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil or bad stuff. Hold on for dear life to what is good. Be good friends who love deeply. 
practice playing second fiddle. In other words, don't think you're the most important person. He keeps going. Don't burn out, he says. Keep yourselves fueled, gassed up, <laughs> and aflame on fire. Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. How many of you are cheerful this morning? Anyone? Excellent, so am I. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. That means be creative. Use the gifts God has given you to be welcoming to others. Oh, and here's a good one, you guys. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Oh, here's a hard one. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Not just some people, but everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. And here's how he ends it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. Now, I bet you heard every word, didn't you? Yep. And you remember it like it was said to you just moments ago, right? Not so much. If I gave you a test right now, would you be able to write all 30 of those down? The yeah. do's and don'ts? No, me neither, quite frankly. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you something easy to remember. If you're going to take all 30 of those things and remember them every day of your life, all you need to do is remember two things. If you focus on loving God with everything you've got, that's the first thing. And then if you focus everything else on loving your neighbor, that means the people you like and the people you don't like so much, and even the people you haven't met yet. If you focus all of your energy on loving God and loving your neighbor, you've got all 30 of those under control. Does that make it, make it simpler? So what are the two things you got to remember to do? Number one? Okay, we got some work to do, guys. <laughs> There's only two things to remember. First thing, most important, who do we need to love? God. God, yep. Everything we've got poured into that love. Love God with everything we have. And the second thing? Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Just some neighbors? No. No. Which All neighbors? All of your neighbors. I think you're getting it. So let's do it one more time. First thing, most important thing is? Love God. Love God with everything you've got. And the second thing? Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. You've got it. 30 things down to two. Can you remember it? Yep. Can you do it? Yep. I think you can. With God's help, we can all do it. Thanks for coming up today. You can head back to your seats. They say they think they can do it. Can you do it? I think you can with God's help. Let's stand up and confess our faith in this God who calls us to live authentic lives of love and mercy. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We open ourselves to the gifts of the Holy Spirit as we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, we pray for the church and its mission. Unite us in service, sustain us in suffering, and let our love for others be genuine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In the wake of Hurricane Harvey, reveal your presence to those in Texas and Louisiana and all areas affected by this recent storm, that all may know your healing, hope, and love. As one community on earth, bound together by your grace, inspire us to pray, serve, and help all who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, when the storms of life rage and threaten to overtake us, awaken our faith to know the power of your peace. Deliver us from our fear and ease our anxiety. Help us to endure the times of uncertainty and give us strength to face the challenges ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and for their leaders Overcome evil with good. Show us how to live peaceably with all. Teach us how to love our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith and its ministry. Move us to persevere in prayer. Extend hospitality to strangers. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We pray for those hospitalized this week and those in need of our prayers, Joyce Erickson, Mandolin Gady, Shireen Liebson, Margot Nelson, Jacqueline Spars, Bob Madison, Carol Williams, Roy Severson, Sherry Rothenberger, and those we name in our hearts. We pray also for the families of Sylvia Broughton and Linda Vershore as they mourn their, their deaths. May your spirit bring healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. A whole lot of peace being shared this morning. It's great to see. It's great to witness and be a part of. You may be seated. We invite kids to come up and help with the noisy offering if you would like. Come on up here and get your buckets. Otherwise, we continue with the offering.
show a father's heart. And through the word we're reaching out to show them who you are. time to gather around this table and it's in this meal that we see and receive a love that is genuine and true a love that is revealed to us in Jesus Christ who on the night when he was betrayed took bread he gave thanks for it and then gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and then after supper, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks, and then he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup, it's the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord's invitation is for you and for all. Come to this banquet for all is now ready.
You were waiting there for me. Now I can see that there are good things only suffering can bring. Oh Lord, holy Lord, who took my despair and put joy. The work I have to do, knowing I'm forgiven and acceptable to you. Thank you for your healing grace. Your
And now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen every one of you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, worship is nearly finished, but before you go, I want to share with you some important information. First of all, in response to the devastation of Hurricane Harvey and the flooding in Texas and Louisiana, we've placed in your bulletin today an insert uh, which tells you how you can help those who have been affected by the floods and the hurricane through Lutheran disaster response. We're already there working on the ground and so we can support their efforts through our financial assistance. In fact, that's the best way we can help right now. In the future, there may be other ways that we will be able to help and we will let you know about those at the appropriate time. If you choose to give today or this week uh, by writing a check Make sure that you put on the memo line, Lutheran Disaster Response, and 100% of your gift will go toward disaster relief. Coming up next weekend is kickoff weekend here at Our Saviors with a return to our regular worship schedule, 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, but then 8.45 and 11 for both uh, festive and celebrate worship services. Also, Sunday school will begin next Sunday as will Sunday morning breakfast. Then on the following Wednesday, September 13th, Wednesday activities will begin with 5 o'clock supper, Wednesday school, adult education, confirmation, wood shop ministry. You can register for things like confirmation or Sunday school or Wednesday school online. How to do that is printed in your bulletin. Other youth activities that are coming up are also noted in your bulletin as well. Then, looking a little bit further out, a three-week mini-series is uh, going to be happening here uh, at uh, Our Saviors on the movie The Shack. It'll begin September 16th and 17th. You can view the movie prior to that weekend uh, in the Holy Word Theater right here at Our Saviors. The dates and times are provided in your bulletin. We're also encouraging all of you to participate in a life group um, experience with this preaching mini-series. Uh, it'll, it'll be a chance for you to meet some new friends and uh, go deeper in your faith through conversation around scripture and the themes of the movie. Also on September 17th is going to be God's Work Our Hands Sunday as we celebrate the work of our church out in the community and in the world. So we invite you to wear your yellow God's Work Our Hands t-shirt if you've got one or your Serve Sioux Falls t-shirt, if you got one this summer, or your Live Generously t-shirt, which there have been many opportunities to get one of those in the past year or two. It'll be a great way to celebrate service that's happening through our saviors. Finally, we want to lift up the OSL organ series. It continues this Wednesday at 1215, with lunch following at 1245. This week's performing organist is Kyle Quanbeck from Peace Lutheran Church. Whew, that's a lot, but there's a lot going on, and we give thanks to God for all that is happening here at Our Saviors and through the ministry of this place. We invite you to stand one more time as you are able for a blessing, and then we'll sing our way out. Weary travelers, go now in peace with the love of Christ in your hearts. You are released from your burdens. Go with joy and bring the kingdom of God to a weary world. Thank you, God, for your good gifts. Let's try to fill the hall here with sound. It's a pretty big hall. Let's see what we do.
thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.